Hi, and welcome to this interview. With me today, I have Matthew Skelton. And uh, Matthew, welcome to both this interview and to the program Leading Complexity. But for those that don't know you, could you please present yourself? Sure. Thanks, Thomas. Good to be here. So I'm Matthew Skelton. I'm the co-founder at Complex, and I'm the co-author of the book, Teams Apologies. It looks like this. This is now almost four years since the book was published. It was published in September 2019. And we did a follow-up book called Remote Team Interactions Workbook that was published in early 2022, which is a sort of a little bit like an appendix that deals with some of the remote and hybrid working challenges uh, that organizations now find themselves in. Uh, my background is in uh, software engineering, but increasingly over my career, I've been involved more and more in helping work be more effective. So working with teams, looking at the flow of work, looking at the way in which tools interact with uh, teams and their, their ability to do things effectively or not. And that obviously up to four years ago led to uh, me writing with Manuel Paish, my co-author of the, the Team to Bodies book. And since then, last four years, where we've been heavily involved in helping lots of organizations around the world to think about fast flow, think about cognitive load, think about Conway's law, all the kind of things we talk about in the Team to Bodies book. And really, I guess, seeing the, seeing the scale of the challenge that really exists in industry uh, across many different sectors. And Team to Bodies is helping with, with that, helping to address that challenge. But the, the challenge is, is quite substantial as, we, as organizations try to grapple with kind of complexity and uncertainty and volatility and all these kind of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that you wrote the book and I've been, it's one of my favorites. And for everyone listening to this that have not read it, please, please do. It's helping a lot to uh, understand the idea of the organization and, and how to get better flow. So, um, Matthew, this... Uh, this program will be about complexity, and um, uh, I guess you have a lot of things to say about complexity. So what is complexity for you, and, and what are your best advices for leaders who is uh, maneuvering in complexity? So the first thing I would, I think I, I end up saying to, to leaders is, like, what kind of complexity are you really talking about? Because there's complexity, which is, oh, this thing is really difficult. And it feels all kind of lots of different parts, lots of different things interconnected. Uh, and that's kind of fine as one kind of complexity, but there's obviously the complexity that um, that is different from something being complicated. So drawing on on uh, the, the kind of definitions from Dave Snowden and Kinepin and that kind of thing, and plenty of, uh, of other people too, to, to indicate that actually there's sort of different ways of responding in different situations, something um, some situations might actually need lots of expertise, but it's 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 still to some extent kind of mechanical, if you like, how that thing how that thing needs to be addressed. In other situations, you've got this emergent behaviour from uh, distributed actors deciding to operate independently in the space. Um, of course, the the IT industry discovered kind of complexity through. Uh, the the emergence of cloud computing and kind of web scale systems because um if, if you go back to the if you go back to the uh software systems of say the eight, the 90s and early 2000s these were uh often they were often were quite involved but they were still uh, under the control of if you like a single kind of um a, a single organization or single software provider and so the actual amount of emergent complexity was relatively small whereas when you start to connect together computer systems from around the world and they're doing random different things and they've got slightly different errors and then effectively behavior emerges out of out of that kind of system that's a very different it needs a very different kind of way of of operating and 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 working with that kind of system system of systems often and um i think it's fair to say that traditional management training uh, an education in your MBA and this kind of thing. Most of most of that kind of approach doesn't deal with emergent complexity, that kind of emergent behavior at all. Like there's no, there's, so there's certainly very few education systems worldwide that have had uh, kind of that kind of emergent behavior as part of the core curriculum, or perhaps almost none uh, uh, since well forever, effectively. Um, 
maybe here and there, but 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 not as a not as a general rule. And so we have an entire generation of leaders and emerging leaders who are only just getting to grips with this way of thinking. Like we can't control the outcomes directly. We can't control it by more project management, by more people, or by more rules, or more uh, auditing, or, or any of this kind of stuff. You can't control this stuff because it's fundamentally the wrong way to operate in that kind of environment. And, and this is really disorientating for lots of, lots of people in general, whether they're managers or not, or leaders. It's very disorientating. And so having to describe like it's important to describe the kind of approaches that actually can work in this space again back from the it side observability is part of part of the picture we're actually going to observe what's going on in these it systems and then decide how to act which is uh which is different from um from how people might have done it before where they just planned to do something and then it would just magically appear and obviously in very simple kind of context that's probably a reasonable way to approach it, but we're working in, in now in contexts which are which are far from simple. Um, and and so to, to the starting point is to try and work out what what people mean when they say complexity, which kind of what's their mental model of of of, of how they even need to approach this stuff. Because um, they some people might just think, oh, we just need to we just need to understand it better. We need to decompose it better. We need to we need to label it better. Um, and there's a certain amount of value in that. But if you think that that's the only solution, then that, that you, you're going to be heading in the in, in the wrong direction. So some of this is is very much a kind of eye opening and awareness raising uh, exercise or, or program of of activity really to help people get to grips with something that actually feels quite scary, right, to, to an extent, which is we can't directly control this thing. Historically, through you know um, industrial revolution and the 20th century, we get better and better and better at controlling these machines. This isn't when we're working with complex adaptive systems. These are not machines to control. These are more like an ecosystem where you might be able to put some boundaries and some constraints and see what emerges. And that kind of Im allowing emergence to happen with maybe some boundary setting is so different to what so many people are used to. It's so different. Um, but the people who get it, the people who get it and start to be able to work with that, we, we see, we see, uh, you know, we, we see good results from, from, from that kind of approach. Words, words. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, you're really describing, uh, complexity, um, in, in a way that makes us all understand the, the problem with it, kind of the challenge, I would say. So uh, it's really great. Uh, I, I think it's very important, this part that you're saying that, uh, as a leader, we just have to live with uncertainty. Uh, the, the control is away. We we can't go for that. Um, so you will have a session in uh, the Leading Complexity Program. And um, of course, everyone is curious about what will you talk about and what will they bring with them from that session? So there's a few things here that we'll end up talking about. The, the, the first thing to say is that um, we've actually been quite, we've been, well, we've been very pleased, but also quite surprised by the contexts in which team topologies ideas are being used. So, for example, we know uh, of a law firm in London providing legal services to corporates and individuals and so on, um, and they've been uh, using ideas from team topologies, um, and we've been exploring this together with them. How they can provide coherent legal services, le coherent legal services to their customers. So without the problems associated with previous legal appro approaches to, to, to legal services. For example, traditionally in the UK and I think in the US and some other places too, there's a lawyer who is the one who is trained and is seen as the fee earner. They're the one who bring, in, they're the person who brings in the money. If they're working on a case and they go on holiday for two or three weeks, the case just stops because it can't really progress without their input. Is that the way we want to provide modern legal services to our customers? Probably not. So how do we, the question then becomes, what would it take for a team of people with a mixture of skills to be able to provide ongoing legal services to their customers with skills that span multiple different uh, kind of legal domains? So let's say you've got a business owner 
she is uh, going through a divorce and uh, needs, to, needs to sell the house and uh, deal with custody of the kids, of the children. So that's three different kind of legal uh, areas, let's say, that traditionally she would, she would be bounced from one lawyer to another. But actually, what, what if we could provide a coherent legal service that dealt with all of that stuff? What would it take? And so you can start to use the team's body's ideas in that case, where we've got an ongoing responsibility, we've got a mixture of skills, maybe the fee earner acts more like a specialist or acts as a way to enable that team to work effectively. And this is nothing to do with IT uh, and, and software, which is where we came from, me and my author, Manuel Parish, we, that's, our, that's our expertise, that's where we came from. So that's, that's how we could, we, that's how we focused our responsibility, uh, our awareness in the book, Team Sporty's book. But people have seen these patterns and are adopting them outside, like in legal services. We didn't, this, this wasn't a, a push that we made, if you like, this was people coming to us. We've also seen it in healthcare. So uh, we saw a couple of years ago, someone who was high, uh, who kind of um, a leading figure in the uh, management of the part of the National Health Service in the UK. And she was saying, look, these teenage bodies ideas are great. We can use them for managing doctors, uh, local doctors practices. And uh, let's apply these ideas like across the entire of the health service. And we know of people using the ideas inside uh, accident and emergency teams, so specialists like a surgeon, a doctor and a nurse, an anaesthetist and all this kind of stuff, looking after someone who is like, they've got COVID, they're pregnant, they've just been in a car accident, uh, in a car crash. This kind of approach here, we can start to think, okay, what's going on? If, if the ideas in teams bodies can be used in uh, IT and software, for sure, but they can be used in legal services. They can be used in uh, healthcare. We also know they can be used in education design and a whole bunch of other places like this. What's really going on? And in the, in the, in the masterclass, we'll dive into that and try to work out what's behind the ability of teen bodies to work in these different contexts. We've got some clues really, if you think about it, because at the heart of teen bodies is the idea of flow, long-term ownership and team cognitive load. And these things point towards what we think is actually happening um, kind of behind the scenes, if you like, why, why people from well outside of IT are starting to find these ideas useful and putting them into practice. Um, and um, so we'll, we'll go through and explore some of this stuff together uh, and try to derive, if you like, why the ideas and team bodies might be useful, what's behind them, if you like. Um, and and then try to look towards the future to see some additional ways in which the team to body ideas can actually be useful, particularly in this kind of uncertain world where we need to be very adaptive. We need to think about uh, and, and uh, technology is changing very rapidly. And uh, the, the operating context is changing rapidly. So operating context might be um, regulations. So uh, legal regulations, <laughs> compliance, it might be trading relations with other countries are changing all the time for lots of reasons and so on and so on so the, the the world around us is changing pretty rapidly we've got climate change in the mix as well quite clearly now this year um, which is part of the reason why other things are changing also these things are connected um, so the need to change and adapt is not going to go away the need to change and adapt is only going to increase as these kind of challenges increase over the next few years and so we'll look, we'll look at how these teams body ideas can help us to think through um, how we help our organization to continue to be adaptive. It's a move away from designing the ideal organization as a static thing and moving towards something that is continuous. It's a dynamic of reshaping the boundaries inside the organization and responsibilities for ultimately for agility. Um, and we'll look at that in, like I said, in these, in these different contexts. Wow. So I, hopefully we will have a lot of lawyers and healthcare people as well <laughs> participating <laughs> in the program. Um, I, I think that is really great. Uh, and, uh, especially the thing you say that organizations today need to be adaptable. Uh, I've been studying or reading a couple of books about, uh, like the big companies in Silicon Valley and one thing that is common for all of them is the adaptability of the organization being 
quickly to maneuver when something happens and they could see that we need to have this and how they could be really strong uh, but flexible at the same time it, it's interesting so um great i'm very happy to have you in the program and very much looking forward to your session yeah me too it's gonna be great yeah absolutely and in october 26 is is the date so yeah. looking forward to hear more from you and thank you very much for participating in this interview as well super thanks thomas thank you very much matthew take care